Good biblical morning. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Bible Read Along. Today we are looking at that way. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Come and join us. Grab a Bible and read along. And this group, if you haven't ever been here before, we like to call this Bible Read Along. Bible Read Along. Bible Read Along. I hope that you bring a friend. She's looking at me funny. My name is Daniel. Um, people love the song. People love my little ditties. I can't help it. Little ditties? Little ditty about Jack and Diane. Um, so people love it. If you love it, if you love the song, let us know. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I love Jesus. And I'm here today with my giant zit on my forehead here. Um, that zit will be co-hosting Bible Read Along today. Um, so we can't wait to hear what, what, what it has to say. Uh, also I'm here with my wife, Ashley. So take a minute and, uh, let us know in the comments where you're from. Say hello. Um, yeah, just jump in. Let us know you're here. There's Matthew in Kelowna, Ashley in Red Deer. And Facebook has changed the way that they do their layouts here. So now I got to go back and forth between screens to publish comments, which I didn't like before, but uh, we will we'll just get used to it, I guess. Thanks, Facebook. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. You're so awesome. Um, did this one publish? See, now it didn't change from Ashley's. It's going to take longer on the comments, so I might not have to publish them. I might just say hello to people that are here. Like Milton's here from Aurora, Colorado. Good morning, Milton. We are glad you're here. Morning, Carolyn, who loves our good morning song, the good song. It said it published, so let's go back to the graphics. See, see how long before I could just publish them all. I could see the comments. Yeah, it's not changing from Ashley's. Oh, well. Try it one more time. There. Good morning and a good song from Carolyn. Okay, I'm going to unpublish these graphics because Facebook's driving me crazy. And it's just taken way too long to get back and forth to those. So we'll do it old school here. Welcome. Who all we got here? Valentina in California. Smashley. Ashley's here. Mercury, we are so glad you are here from Connecticut. Mercury is also part of our admin team. Matthew, I know there's some others. I saw some names jump on. Rachel, good morning. I believe I saw Dave jump on earlier. I don't know if he's still watching, but we are glad you're here. Um, we don't know if you're here unless you comment because it just, all it tells us is a number. So we would love to hear from you. Take a minute and at least just comment. Just say hi. Just say I'm here. Say good morning. Say good biblical morning. Say you're ready for the word. Just say something, please. Um, and then do us a favor. Please help us out. The best way to do that is by sharing and inviting. So if you have not yet already, please share this out. Uh, let people know, tag someone that you know, maybe you've talked to about this. Hey, come join us. I saw already um, Ashley has done that with one of her friends, Michelle. Michelle, come join us. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Um, and that's that's it. Tag, share, help us just keep building this. Uh, we, we did a poll yesterday. What were you laughing at? I just congrats. <laughs> Um, Carolyn on the new marriage, but it makes it sound like she got married, but she didn't get married. Her son got married. Congrats, so, Carolyn. On your son getting married. <laughs> on your son getting married. Um, we are excited. And yeah, so help us share, help us invite people. Tell us you're here. I think that's it. That's all of the Bible read along things. Oh, we did a poll yesterday and it'd be interesting to hear from you. I know some of you had already answered that poll, but, um, if we did, if we produced this to a podcast, doing both, we'll still be live on Facebook, 
We're going to share the video to YouTube. Those are our two options right now, but we would include now a third option, which is an audio podcast. Would you listen? Do you regularly listen to podcasts? Is that something you do? Let me know. I know some of you had commented, uh, um, you know, that you you don't know podcasts much. You don't listen to them. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I shouldn't say I listen. I listened Previous to my accident while I was truck driving, I listened to a lot of podcasts while I was driving. And the nice thing is you just click it on, it's audio, and then you can turn your phone off and still listen to it. Not like a Facebook Live where you have to have it open and watching it and, you know, these kind of things. So podcast is a nice option, especially if you're doing a lot of driving. Uh, it's great to get in your vehicle and just push play and it come through your Bluetooth speakers or connected to your, your car stereo. Um, it's a great way to just stay on track of it and listen during the day. Is that something you would do? Let us know in the comments if you would listen to a podcast from Bible Read Along. Before we go any further, here is a video which, see, these are the things I have to be aware of because if we go to a podcast, they can't see this video. So... I have to probably work out some things like that. But here's a quick video from Home of Hope on the shoe project today. All right, that is Home of Hope Shoe Project for between $6 and $13 Canadian. You can get children's shoes, many of which have never owned shoes for in their life. And when they get them, they're it nice is shoes. They're their not shoes. Like cheap, crappy dollarama. Their shoes that they're fit nice them. Shoes. They're nice shoes. Um, they are designed for that kid. I shouldn't say designed, but they are picked out for that child specifically. Um, usually those kids are part of our feeding program. They're people that we work with, with the family. Sometimes they're part of the adoption, um, sponsor programs, but, uh, they're kids that just haven't had shoes and then they get shoes. And so it's really cool. I've been there in Rwanda when they handed out shoes to kids for the very first time. And the, the, the look on their faces, the look on their parents' faces, uh, you, you can't ever... I can't ever fully describe the joy that those kids had walking around and dancing in those shoes. And it's the same type of joy your little kids used to have at Christmas time before. Yeah, it was. Before they expected. It was that teenagers. exactly. It was the same joy of Christmas time before you know commercialism and teenagers <laughs> yeah. ruined everything. So uh, you know when you were happy to just get something when you were a kid and you got one thing and you were happy about it. Not now when you get fifteen twenty different things and you're still grumpy and upset that you didn't get what you wanted um anyways that's my little rant for today <laughs> my children if you are ever listening in the future yes i'm talking about you all right let's and and ashley's too okay let's pray together let's pray together pray with a one a mighty voice a mighty voice that's an elvis song by the way from the movie um, bad habit, I think it is, where he's something about working with nuns. Anyways, I'm an Elvis fan, and that's a great song. Pray together. Lord Jesus Almighty, thank you for another day. Thank you for another time in your word. We just ask that you bring life today and bring bring your spirit. We ask for your spirit to be here and reveal truth. Point us to Jesus. Point us to the Father. Reveal things in our own heart. Would this be like a mirror that we are looking into that reveals stuff in our own lives so that we can work on it and improve to be more like Jesus Christ? Make us Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled Christians in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray together, pray together. If you're looking for a fun Elvis song, go look that one up today. Pray together. I wonder if I can find it before we continue They'll here. Copyright that. I know they will, but but I might be able to show like ten seconds of it. We'll see. 
pray together, Elvis. It's on a commercial right now. All right, we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 today. If you got your Bible, if you are ready, hit that thumbs up, hit that heart, and we are going to dive into the Word of God. But before we do... I'm going to be careful or I'm going to get copyright here. All right, there's a little clip of Elvis Pray Together. Go check it out for yourselves today. Let's this chapter about our favorite subject. This is one of people's <laughs> favorite subjects. We are going to talk about money. We're going to talk about collecting money Amen. for the church. Oh, All turn right, my volume down. Free. Sorry. Um, so if you're ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that heart. Tell me in the chat you're ready for the word of God. Here we go, 2 Corinthians. There, oh, look at that. My wife's all over it. You guys know when those hearts go flooding, you could do it too because you're going to hear it in about three seconds after it goes or five <laughs> seconds after it goes. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We are reading from the NIV version. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I need some black death today. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, good, good. Black death, coffee, dirty bean water. Here we go. The collection for the Lord's people. <clears throat> Here we go. I love the Bible. By the way, I love that you guys join us. I love having fun. I hope you guys are laughing. Please tell us if you are. Tell us if you think we're annoying. Just tell us stuff. We want to hear from you. All right, the collection of the Lord's people. And now... Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Isn't this interesting? Let's talk. Let's get into it right away. Um, the Macedonian churches... There is grace, such the grace of God has shown up. It's changed lives. It's transformed people. Even in the midst of severe trials, they overflow in joy. Don't let your circumstances steal your joy. The, you can be in the middle of trials and still have joy. Now, what is joy? We've talked about this a little bit in Galatians in the fruit of the spirit, but joy is a, it doesn't depend on what's happening. Not like happiness depends on what is happening around you, but joy is a confidence. It's a comfort. It's knowing that no matter what is happening, that we, God is on the throne. He's working things for good and that there is a joy that comes. It's what caused Paul who wrote this in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas to be able to to sing in prison in the middle of the night after they had been beaten up, stripped naked, pulled through the town, and then put in the innermost prison at midnight, the darkest hour, they were still able to praise God. Why? That's joy. It doesn't depend on your circumstances. So what's happening is they're having a trial. There's joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity we've heard so many people well i just can't right now money's tight i can't be generous right now i can't help others no even in poverty you can help other people i remember being in uh, i've done several missions trips i did a few to mexico three to mexico i've been to africa kenya rwanda um been to we did some in in uh all over bc on the the uh, native reserve land as well. And we've been to Nelson and we, I've been a few places on missions trips. And I remember some one time in Mexico, this poor, poor lady, you know, poverty stricken, dirt hut, um, side of the road. And we went in and we suddenly had 15 people and she was a founder of a church in a city. And she was the only member of this church. She started a Christian church in this little village and she was the, and now some people got saved and some, she was, she was the only one and she got saved and came back to her city and said, I'm starting a church and no one would come. People would not come for a long time. 
But man, even in her poverty, she offered us everything she had. She gave, made a meal, she made, and it was one of the best meals we've had ever. And uh, on the mission trip, I'm talking. And it was, you know, this amazing meal. And she, and she just, even in her poverty, she said, I'm going to be generous and give. Let's keep going here. Verse three, for I testify that they gave us as much as they were able. This is a key word here. This is a boundary word. They didn't go beyond. Well, I'm broke. I can't, but they realized what they could give and still gave. And even beyond their ability entirely on their own they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the lord's people and they exceeded our expectations they gave themselves first of all to the lord and then by the will of god also to us so we urged titus just as he had earlier made a beginning earlier made a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part but since you excel in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in complete earnestness in the love we have kindled in you see that you also excel in this grace of giving so he's he's kind of don't take all these gifts from god without giving back dang ashley just said don't take all these gifts from god without giving back same in our churches today. Well, I don't think we need to give. It's not in the Bible to tithe. And it, you're right, it's not. It's. I'll tell you right now, tithing was in the Old Testament. It's not mentioned in the New Testament. What is mentioned in the New Testament is ex, extru, extravagant giving. In fact, they gave all they had. They gave a tenth isn't mentioned in the New Testament because more often than not, they gave way more than that. And we just read about this. They gave even beyond what they were able to. They just gave not only to the church, they gave to Paul and to Titus. They gave extra gifts. They gave, I I love being a giver. I'm just going to say it. Me and Ashley give. Uh, we give to Home of Hope. That's why we promote them here on our, on our show um, broadcast live video whatever you want to call this um <clears throat> we give to home of hope we give to our church we give to our building fund we regularly tithe we give to people in need in fact just just yesterday hey somebody's had an accident and can we just send them a gift card for skip the dishes to bless them during this? yes 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 but we've seen that come around twofold and we've seen that she said for us too you know but this is we've That's seen not this why we do it. That's not why, but we've seen the gifts of God and we, it, how much it impacted us that we want to give to others now as well. And then, and then people say, oh, I can't, I can't afford it right now. That makes me so crazy. You can't sit in the Starbucks lineup waiting for your $6 coffee and tell me you can't afford something. So Ashley just said, you know, people say they can't afford it, but they'll still go have Starbucks and they'll still go, you know, do these things. And that's exactly what this is talking about. They gave generously. They gave a be what they were able they set a budget and then they gave even more. And so they tightened the budget and said, well, we can give extra. And most people, if they can't give today, it's not, it's not because they don't have the money. It's because they don't know how to handle money. They don't know how to budget. They don't, and I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I don't know your situation, what you do, how you give. All I'm saying is there is a spiritual principle here of giving joyfully, abundantly, above and beyond. Give to all the needs that you can because freely you've received, freely give. And it blesses the church. It blesses the leaders. And I love to be a giver. I remember hearing a pastor, um, uh, what was his name? Charlie Robinson. I had to think for a minute. I was thinking of his son, Samuel, Charlie Robinson. So they do, they're revivalists in Canada. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe you don't know them. I don't know. But anyways, Charlie Robinson was preaching and he said, I just want to be, I just want to be so-and-so. And everyone kind of looked at him and he said, I just want to sow and sow and sow and sow. <laughs> because eventually when you sow enough seeds, you do reap a harvest. But that is not why we give. We give just to bless. Even if we were to receive nothing in return, and I'm going to step on maybe some no, toes receive here. Nothing. We receive all these gifts from God that he lifts right here. That's faith. right. We do knowledge, receive all these gifts, faith, business, knowledge, love, love, you know, grace. and that. But that's where, and 
I'm going to I'm going to maybe step on some toes here because I actually don't agree with giving messages that say give your money and you'll be blessed and you'll be I actually don't agree with that. I I I get it sometimes. I don't like when churches consistently say that. Well, you give to get and you you know so and you're going to receive and God's going to even if we didn't receive anything in return at all other than the love of God. God is good. He saved my soul from hell. Mm-hmm. He is worth every single dollar of, that I own, that I have because I have been saved from eternal hell. And if I never saw anything in return, I would give everything away because he is just worthy and good, even if I never saw a return on it. Amen. There's my little tidbit. Let's keep reading the Bible, though. I am not commanding you, verse 8, but I want to test the sincerity of your love. Uh-oh, giving is part of our love. Uh-oh, it actually shows our sincerity of love, how we give. Not only what the amounts we're giving but the attitude of our heart in giving, is it done with joy? Um, I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. So what's he doing here? He's comparing the church in Corinth and Macedonia and saying, man, Macedonia stepped up. They gave, they, they gave in their poverty. They gave out of everything they had. What are you doing, Corinth? It's your turn. Um, For you know that the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, he became poor so that through his poverty, you might become rich. Jesus gave up everything so that he could be a poor human being. Um, And and by the way, that's a whole other thing. I'll get into that another time. Jesus didn't stay poor, by the way. It's, it's being poor is not a sign of holiness. I just want to say that. But even in poverty, we are commanded to give generously. We are commanded to, to it's, there's a principle here that blesses us. Um, poor is also a state of mind. Poor is a state of mind often. Jesus had money. How do I know that? Well, um, the three wise men brought him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh that probably funded his whole trip to Egypt. Uh, we've talked about this in some of the Gospels. You can go read that. I mean, this would have been years and years of wages that was given to them. Jesus also wasn't poor. How do I know that? Because Joseph, his father, earthly father, stepfather, um, owned a business. He was a carpenter, well-known carpenter. Jesus was even known as a carpenter, part of the business. I'm assuming later. Now let's get into Jesus in ministry. Again, I didn't want to go off on all this, but it's, it's, I'm not saying, I'm just trying to show you, it's not right or wrong to be poor. It just is. Now we should aim to create wealth, build wealth. Why? So that we can be a blessing even more to more people. That's all I'm trying to say here. Okay. Verse 10. But that doesn't mean you need to wait until you have those things to bless. Thank people. you, Ashley. Mic drop. You don't wait until you have that business. And well, when we have a business, we'll start giving. No, yeah, you won't. You have that attitude like, oh, well, when I just have a little more. When I just yeah. Have a well, when more, we just when we've just paid off this bill, when we've just then we'll give. No, you won't. I'm sorry you won't because you're creating a habit right now. Your principles show that it's more important you take care of yourself than others. You don't wait to have money to start being generous. You start being generous and then it opens the opportunity for you to handle more money responsibly. Um, verse 10. Let's keep going here. Is this is this too heavy? No. Um, I, I know people tune out as soon as you start talking about money, but this is the Bible. I'm just reading the Bible and explaining it here. So hopefully this isn't too heavy. Keep, if you think it is, tell me. If you don't, if you think it's good, please let me know um, in the comments. Carolyn says, I'm encouraged this morning for this reading on giving in love and my heart swells with joy and anticipation on the growth and wellness of God's church. And you just tied into a big thing. I mean, wellness, the wellness of our soul, our spirit depends on how we are releasing the things of God to others, not only financially, the other gifts that were mentioned here as well. Let's keep going. 10. And here is my judgment about what is, oops, sorry, too far. Here's my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, 
finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. This is, again, another boundary word here. So he says, you guys were the first to give and you desired it, but keep doing it. Just because we took one offering doesn't mean it's done. Keep giving according to your means. Again, this is a budgeting word. Are you willing to look at what you have and say, yeah, I'm willing to give up. You know what? What would it cost to give one pair of shoes to kids? I'm willing to give up two coffees a month to purchase one pair of shoes for kids every single month this year. And you do it and you make it, you make a goal, you make it, 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 it doable, achievable. And then you, you go after it and you do it. And then suddenly you start to realize, I'll tell you in our life, we give, and this isn't, I'm not trying to we brag, off of 60% of our paycheck. but we live off of 60% of our income. So as soon as money comes in, we, we tithe 10% to the church. We put 10% in a savings. We put 10% towards any debt that we owe. And then we owe extra and we pay that all the time too. And then we, we have another 10% basically that is giving in other things, building funds, um, these kind of, so when we make money for every dollar we make, we make 60 cents. However, we have been more financially blessed. I'm doing it right now. See, if you give, you're going to be blessed. But I'm just saying the practical reality of it is as we give more, it just made room. It taught us how to manage money better so that we are doing more with even a smaller amount. And now we have extra. And then there's things that people give and you guys gave while I had an accident. And, you know, there's things that suddenly you just go, wow. And even when money we received from the accident, we didn't take that and go, that's our gift to us. We took 10% to the church. We took 10% into savings. We put 10% into bills and debts. And we put 10% into, you know, not just our regular expenses either, I'm saying. Like we still... Anyways, you guys get the point. That's how we have done according to our means. So we had to look and go, what is our money? What's our budget? How do we now live this out? We probably live with less than the average person. We probably make less than you guys are expecting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, however, man, God's done. We look, we walk through our house and we go, wow, we have a fully furnished house and most of our furniture has been free that we find or people give us or that we find on buy and sell and we find or Ashley gets when she's cleaning a house or Ashley gets when she's doing a move out clean. Hey, I found a couch. Do you want it? Let's clean it. Let's yes. And we go, wow, look at how much this desk that I'm sitting at right now. You can't see where I'm sitting is it was a free desk. There's, you know, things that, that come and we just go, man, God, you've blessed us. And then we look at ministry and influence and go, God, you've blessed us. Not because of, and I want to be careful because we didn't give to get back. But when you give from the right heart and you handle money properly, it expands your capacity to handle more than what you had previously. I hope I'm wording that right. And to appreciate what you do have. So anyways, um, completion of it according to your means for it is if the willingness is there, boy, I really like, I wish I could give to Home of Hope. Then the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed. This isn't to say you're you're supplying all the needs for everyone. There's times that you're in wealth and there's times you're in need. It's a balance of life. That makes me think of uh, whoever that lady is that poured perfume on Jesus's. Yeah, pouring the perfume on Jesus's feet. The thing. alabaster box and the jar and. And the heart behind it was preparing him for burial. It wasn't about look at my, exp then you got another story of Jesus talking about in the temple and they're giving, 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 and they're watching, by the way, they were watching what people gave. Even Jesus was watching what people gave. And then he said to the woman that gave two pence, two tiny, the smallest amount of money, but it was all she had. And she gave it with the right heart. And God said, she gave more than all of you Be <laughs> excuse me choking on my cough candy because it's um it's the heart that you give in not the amount you are giving that's why again do i believe in tithing yes i believe it's a biblical principle um to me that's the minimum 
of what God would want us to give. And some people look at that 10%. How do you live with 10% less? You just do it. That's not my money. That's God's money. Eh, I'm going off. We got to get this finished because I got to get to Calgary and go see my surgeon today. Um, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed. This isn't to put extra pressure on you, but that there might be equality. This is not talking about equal giving, but this is talking about equal sacrifice according to your means. At that present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. There's going to be times you need times. I'm, I've even thought about this with the food bank. Our church has a food bank. I don't know if your church does, yeah, doesn't. Sure. If we have a hamper program, maybe you're going, no, our church doesn't have that. Maybe God's poking you right now to say, start one. Um it's not hard. There's people that will give and donations, but there's been times I've needed to take advantage of our food program. Hey, we're in need. I need a hamper. And I and some people feel bad about, well, I can't go ask for a hamper. And I, Why? You're in need. That's what it's there for. They, people gave so that when you're in need, you could be blessed. And you're not always, hopefully you don't stay in a spot where you're always in, oh, I need another food it's hamper. Same with your work and your, and your teeth thing. My work, I can't say too much about that. Oh. Um, but work, my work has a program set up that employees give into. It's matched dollar by dollar for the company so that when other employees are in need, they go, hey, we have a fund to help you out through this hard time. And then, and I've been a recipient of that. And so now I'm going, okay, I'm on the other end. How do I start telling work, I'd like to start giving into this fund to help others in their time of need. That's all he's saying. There's times you're going to need. There's times you can be the one helping give the need. We all play a part in that. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have, have too much and the one who gathered little did not have too little. What a praise in there like you you may have a lot but you don't have you know you have a lot but it's not too much you can give you can help and you might have a little but it's not too little that you can't help and give and same thing um let's finish this chapter last little bit here titus sent to receive the collection that let's finally we've talked about all the money now put it in the plate put your bling in the thing all right thanks be to god who put into the heart of Titus the same concern I have for you. For Titus, Titus, these are some key words here because we're going to, once we're finished Corinthians, we're probably going to get into Timothy and Titus and some of those books now. So we're hearing these players and then we're going to go hear about their letters after we're done Corinthians. Titus had the same concern I have for you. For Titus not only welcomed our appeal, but he is coming to you with much enthusiasm and on his own initiative. He paid his own way. And we are sending along with him the brothers who is, who is praised by all the church for his service to the gospel. What is more, he was chosen by the churches to accompany us as we carry the offering, which we administer in order to honor the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. We want to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this liberal gift. For we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of man. What does this all mean? It means thank you for giving us your offering and we are using it in the best ways possible. There should be accountability in your church and where you're giving. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you give, you have a right to go, where's all my money going? You need to trust leaders and go, okay, I'm giving and trusting that this is going to the right place. But be a part of, if your church has membership, board meetings, be a part and involved to ask to see regularly, yearly, quarterly, whatever it is, the financial statements. Where's money going? What's it? What's it? Most, most non, uh, most, um, Nonprofit organizations have to publicly show their money somewhere, somehow. Yeah. So if you are giving to those, you should see it. Now, ver last couple verses here, and we are done for today. In addition, we are sending with them our brother who has often proved to us in many ways that he is zealous. And now, even more so because of his great confidence in you. 
As for Titus, he is my partner and co-worker among you. As for our brothers, they are representatives of the church and in honor to Christ. Therefore, show these men the proof of your love, put your bling in the thing, and the reason for our pride in you so that the churches can see it. Big chapter, but it was a great chapter. Lots on money there. Um, this is where, you know, often a lot of people go, well, I don't know how to handle money. The Bible doesn't really talk. It does. You just have not dug into it the way that you need to. So that is first Corinthians, second Corinthians rather chapter eight. And I'm going to just read out some questions here rather than posting them. I think I wish, I wish Facebook hadn't changed all this, but they did. So Yep, I can't show all the graphics today, all the chat, but um, just looking through. What collections did Titus receive? Well, they received money, Matthew. Bell says giving from the heart. Absolutely. That's the most important part. Uh, looks like that's it, actually, for questions today. So, guys, thank you so much. Um, I'm heading out to Calgary, Alberta now to go meet with our surgeon and get an update on my hand it looks good everything's healing good but now we're just trying to get movement i have movement in these lower knuckles but we're trying really hard to how do we get so most of the time we're self moving these getting them to stretch so i'm going to go meet with him today and see what the next steps are if future surgeries are still needed and those kind of things too and what it looks like for for where i'm at right now so we will do we have i've slacked on video updates on my hand out since i've been out of the hospital at the end of march i apologize we will be doing a video update either later today or tomorrow about what's going on with my hand god bless you guys thank you so much for being here and we will see you tomorrow as we study more of second corinthians chapter by chapter hopefully you are enjoying it please let me know if you are and again hit that share hit that comment share with others invite others god bless you guys we will be back tomorrow